morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. Our text today comes from Proverbs chapter 30, verse 18 through 20. Three things are too wonderful for me, for I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a virgin. This is the way of an adulteress. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wrong. We've been working through the book, book of Proverbs, chapter 30. This section of the book of Proverbs was written by a man named Agur. He was most likely a post-exilic rabbi. He uh, claims to be a simple man, yet when you read what he wrote and understand the depth of the truth contained in it, you realize that he indeed is a brilliant man. It is a beautiful collection of Proverbs. Most of them are numeric Proverbs, and the one that we are studying today is an example of a numeric Proverb. The book of Proverbs, as we have noted, is a way of taking the information from the Old Covenant, the data, the information, the knowledge, those laws that are contained there, and by giving us specifics, helping us understand the wisdom and insight associated uh, with these commands. And in this case, we're talking about uh, adultery specifically. Uh, many passages you could point back to, Leviticus 18 and 21, such passage, and you shall not lie sexually with your neighbor's wife so as to make yourself unclean with her. And um, among other things, Agur is using the concept of adultery to teach the loss of conscience that is caused by the continual act of sin, and of course, in this case, specifically, the continual act of adultery. What happens and how we lose our conscience. And you may not see that right away. We'll work through the text and show you. This is a numeric proverb, in this case, a list of four things, and it is also thematic. These four things have a concept in, in common in that they are wonderful or complicated to understand, difficult to see, That think of it that way. This is also a riddle. And think about the way this is given, the way of an eagle, the way of a serpent, the way of a ship, the way of a man. This is the way. Agur is telling us there are a list of four things that are pretty wonderful to him. They're pretty amazing. And now he gives us a riddle. These four things are like an adulteress. The riddle is really more properly stated this way. How is this the way of an adulteress? How are these four things that he's describing to us, how are they like an adulteress? What is the connection? And really, it can extend beyond an adulteress. How are these things like a person that commits sin to the point they have lost their conscience. How does that work? Well, we'll walk through them one at a time and see if we can understand the riddle that Agur has given us. The way of an eagle in the air. We have before us a photograph of an eagle flying in the air. There is some amount of wonder to an eagle flying through the air. It's a beautiful thing to watch. The eagle is very powerful. It seeks its prey. It dives from the sky. It is an amazing thing to watch. The eagle leaves no trail. After the eagle has passed through its path, there is no evidence that it has ever been there. No, all sign that the eagle ever existed at that spot in the sky is gone. The eagle leaves no evidence, no marking that it ever existed. The serpent on the rock. A serpent, I've seen this myself, can climb almost vertically up the side of a rock because of its scales, how it can grip the rock, the strength of its muscle. It can climb just almost vertical, certainly can climb trees and other vertical surfaces. A serpent, as it climbs the rock, leaves no marking. Unlike the sand where it leaves a trail when a serpent crawls across a rock, there is no evidence that it was ever there. It may be an amazing thing to watch while it's happening, but once the serpent has gone, there is no evidence that it ever existed, that it left a path. All sign that it was there is gone. A ship at sea. A ship may leave a bit of a wake. It may disturb the water in its path, but shortly this evidence is also gone. I had a friend that was a pilot, fighter pilot during the Vietnam War, 
And one of the problems these fighter pilots would have frequently is when they came back to land on the aircraft carrier, the aircraft carrier would have to run without its lights because they were hiding from the enemy. The only thing the fighter pilot could trust in or look for is the little bit of a path left behind the ship, but they had to hurry and get back because that path would disappear. As the ship went through the waters of the South China Sea, it would stir up the algae and leave a little bit of a glow in the path. But this path only lasted for a short time. In time, the path would dissolve back into the ocean and all evidence that it was ever there would be gone. For years, I read this part of the proverb incorrectly, uh, in part because of the King James translation, it, which re renders it the way of a man with a maid, which sounds like a very romantic thing. And that's not at all what this phrase is talking about. This phrase is describing to us the action of an old man with a virgin or young woman and how he might take her by coercion to commit the act of sex in a way that is not consistent with the laws of marriage. It might even be considered in some conditions of violence. This man approaches this woman. He coerces her or forces her in whatever way. He has a sexual relationship with her. He stains her purity. He leaves behind a damaged woman. And tomorrow he will not remember her name. No evidence in his heart that she ever existed. No, tomorrow and the next day, not even a memory. All evidence of the event is gone. These are the things that are in common between the eagle in the air, the serpent on the rock, the ship at sea, and this man with a virgin. The conscience is seared to the point nothing is left behind. And that is what happens with this woman. This woman that has grown accustomed to committing adultery, it's like she eats, she wipes her mouth, and she says, I have done nothing wrong. She has committed adultery so many times now that it has become no more meaningful to her than sitting down and eating a sandwich. No more... Uh, relevance in her life, emotional connections are gone. She has become hardened, a hard woman and hardened to this event. Indeed has come to pass, Hebrews 3 verse 13, but exhort one another every day as long as it is called today that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. She wanted to commit adultery. She committed adultery. She did it again and again and now she just grabs a paper towel and wipes her mouth and says, I have done nothing wrong. The eagle has left no trail in the air. The serpent, no marking on the rock. The ship, no path in the sea. No memory in the vile man that has soiled the virginity of a young woman. Such is the way of the adulteress. What's our takeaway? There are certain sins that have a very hardening effect on the heart. They affect us in a way that the more we commit them, the more damaged we become. God gave us our conscience for a reason. And when we do things that prick our conscience, we need to listen. God, through this conscience, is telling us something. And we keep going back to the well, we'll reach a point where it means nothing to us. Adultery is just one of those sins, and it's given to us in this text, but there are other things that can do the same. Be warned. Do not violate your conscience before too long your conscience will be gone. You'll just eat, wipe your mouth, and say, I have not sinned. Thanks for joining us today in Beginning the Word. I hope as you have begun today in the Word of God, you will live out today in the Word of God. Thanks for joining us today on Begin in the Word. If this video has been a blessing for you, we invite you to like, comment, or subscribe.